Learning how to cut an object out from an image is really important in creating um, really cool composites. So all you need to do is just load up an image into Photoshop. I've used this image of a dog on his ball that I got from Unsplash. I'll leave a link in the description just in case you want to follow along. So once you've opened up Photoshop, you want to hit W on your keyboard or go to this tool here on the left hand side. If you click and hold, it'll give you a few options. I'll start with the object selection tool. So to use this tool, you just draw a little marquee around whatever object you want. This is really handy if you've got multiple images and you just want to, or multiple objects, and you just want to select one of them. And Photoshop does a reasonable job at trying to select whatever they think you want to select. Um, at the moment, I'm not going to use that, so I'll just hit Command D to deselect. Going back into it, the quick selection tool, it tries to find edges and contrast. So if you click and drag over the image you want or the object you want, it should try and create quite a nice uh, line around that so you can select it and change the color or do whatever you want with it. I'll deselect that. But the quickest way to do it, once you're in this tool, is you go to the Select Subject button and you just click that. So Photoshop's AI will figure out what's the subject and what's the background and try and put um, a selection around what it thinks you want and it's done a really good job. It's got both the ball and the dog. I don't really want to play with the ball um, at the moment, so I'll just get rid of that by holding Option on a Mac, and you'll see that the little crosshair on this selector here will turn into a minus. It's really small, but you can sort of see it. And then I just want to paint away the, the selection that I don't want. Once you've got the dog selected, you just hit Select and Mask. Now this will open up a new window with all these tools to help you refine your selection. So starting with the view, you have a lot of options. You've got onion skin, marching ants, overlay, on black, on white, black and white, or on layers. I mainly use overlay. Personally, that's just the way that works for me. So you click that and it shows you what is selected, what isn't selected, and you can adjust the overlay, oh sorry, you can adjust the opacity of the mask by just dragging this. I keep it around 70% because I think that's enough for me to be able to see what's underneath and also like it shows me what I need. Um, so then in saying that, I will just have a quick look at what it's selected. Now I can see it's missed a few hairs here, which I kind of want, adds a bit more detail. So if I go onto the left hand side and click the refine edge brush tool, click that make my brush a bit bigger by hitting the open or the closed square bracket key. It's a bit big. And then just paint over that. And you see that it starts to select the fine hairs. And it's done a pretty good job there. I'll leave the ears. And I'll try and grab these whiskers. So the same thing, you just click and drag over the, the whiskers area. Don't have to be too precise. Well, I never am. And Photoshop sort of just does its thing. You can see that it's selected most of the whiskers, some of the background, but that's inevitable at this point, um, considering how fine they are. Try and get these ones. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So now another thing I notice here is in this corner, it's captured some of the background, which I don't want. So I'll go over to my brush tool over here. You can just hit B that's easier and I always have a soft brush so I make sure that my hardness is at 0% which just means the edges are really soft and it's not yet a hard line so once I've got that I make it smaller by hitting the open square bracket key make it a bit smaller and then if you hold down option just because you want to deselect so it turns it into that minus again so you hold down option and then you just paint doesn't have to be perfect because there's tools that I'll show you in a second that help clean up some lines. So I'll just go through here, see what needs cleaning. see that it has got rid of part of the hoodie so I'll just paint that back in by releasing options so I'm just adding to that mask or adding to that selection painting that in 
and that's good enough for me. So now the bits that are a bit, a bit jagged, if you zoom in, you'll see that the edges here aren't very clean. And we could just go in with a soft brush and paint that all out, but that would just take too long. So if you go down to the edge detection area um, and the global refinements tools, usually I'll just stick to the global refinements. I don't really touch ed edge detection. You grab the smooth slider and you just move it just a little bit and you'll see that the edge just smoothens out. So showing quick before, after, and all it is is just that, that slider. You can add a small feather too, so a feather makes the edges softer so it blends in with the background a little bit easier. You don't want too much of a feather because it will just look a bit stupid, uh, it just wouldn't look real. So I always add probably about a pixel or two, see how it looks, Ooh, that's too much. That looks good to me. Contrast is supposed to give you a clearer contrast between the edge and the background. I don't really use it a whole lot, but different images may require it. Zooming out. So shift edge basically pushes out or contracts the edge around of what you've selected. So here, so to see how it works, I'll just zoom in on an area. That was a bit much. So if I go into the plus, it should push out. So now you can start to see some of the backgrounds. So if you go all the way, it'll push the edge all the way out to there. Conversely, if you go all the way to the negatives, it'll pull in. I try and keep it around zero. If I need to make small adjustments, I might play with this a little bit, but other than just brushing it out, normally that's what I do. And I think that's, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that because in a composite, no one's going to be zooming in at how, how many percent is that? 450%. No one's going to be doing that. So then once you, you're happy with your selection, you scroll down to the output settings, you go output to, I always go new layer with layer mask just so it's non-destructive so I can make edits later on. So you click that and then you just hit OK. And it's simple as that. So that's before, after. So the reason you have the layer mask is you can go back and edit edges if edges aren't very nice or you want, say for example, you want to add in parts of the background, you can just go to your brush tool and paint in white areas that you want to bring back or you can remove areas, but nothing's, nothing's final, it's not destructive. Destructive is using an eraser because you can't get those pixels back. And yeah, you've successfully cut out an object.